there's a fine line between uh, being at your peak in Beijing and and and, and maybe being past it. And uh, you, I think, made mention that the injury is actually probably been to your benefit. I mean, just because it's kept you kept you fresh from logging a lot of race time. Um, where are you right now as you continue to see your meet, your times drop and you, you just stock home is the only thing between now and the race, um, but now and once you get to Beijing, that's the only meet you have left. Can you kind of give us a, where you are and how much quicker do you think you can get? I think I can get a lot quicker. I, I still feel like my best race is inside and I still feel like I need a little bit more training, a little bit more technical work. and. I don't think the world has seen the best of me yet. I think at Beijing, I will run faster, and I will be in um, a position to win. Um, I, I've only ran with basically five and a half weeks of practicing, and um, a lot of those people, I, the, a lot of men that I raced against this weekend, they ran with two to three months of just straight training. I haven't done that yet. Um, I'm basically just getting into that, so I definitely don't think I peaked. Um, hopefully at Beijing, I'll peak exactly at the right time, the right race. When's the Stockholm meet, and what are you planning on running there? Stockholm meet is the 21st. I may run the 100, but I'm definitely running the 4 by 100. You mentioned uh, Michael Johnson. Do you remember watching him do what he did, and you know, what were your thoughts were back then? Back then, when I watched it, I thought it was impossible for somebody to run that fast. I, I couldn't imagine anybody be coming close to a 19-3 or 43-1. But now that I'm on the track and I just ran 19-8, I think I can, I think it's possible. You know, it's possible for somebody to go faster. Um, I see, you know, you start to, when you get to that level, you start to see the things that he did wrong. Um, like in his start, he popped straight up instead of uh, staying low and, and dropping off the curve. It's just a little things that you see that he did wrong when you get to playing around his time. And um, I think I definitely, hopefully can get down there one day and, and give us a challenge. When you're preparing, when you're getting ready, you're on the track and you're getting ready to run off and race, like what is one thing in mind at that moment? I try to block out everything that I've learned and um, I hit the off button and I just <laughs> go out there and complete the feet. Um, when the gun shoots, I don't realize what I'm doing. I'm just, I'm just in, the, in the moment at that point. I'm just running. Um, I try not to think too heavily as soon as the gun goes off because sometimes when you do that, you, you sit in the blocks and you don't realize what's going on. So you just try to let your nervous system react and go out there and compete. You said that 13-year-old took you too lightly. Is there anybody doing that anymore? I think I'm still an underdog, so I'm just going to keep quiet and, and let's sleep on until the Olympics and, um, and, let, and see what happens, you know. I think there's a, the, of course, you got people out there running nine sevens, and I'm still nine eight. You got people out there still a faster time than in the 200. So I think I'm being overlooked a lot, but that's just gonna motivate me to train harder. Well, you said your life changed uh, as soon as you finished second in that 100. Was it immediate? I mean, could, did it immediately change? Did, did you have phone calls coming from all different directions? It changed when I walked off the track. Mm -hmm. It changed from that point on. It became a lot more. It, it, it came from from being a lot more structured to a lot more things that I have to get into my structure now. So it's um it's changed from that habit. It's more things that I have I brought along that have to help me to get to where I want to be now. And are you reporting to like the United States Olympic Committee? Like, do they tell you your training schedule? How does that work? I mean, they tell you where to go and where yeah, to Yeah, they tell us where to go for the for the Olympic uh, for the um, we go to Beijing or flying and things like that, and um, testing. So definitely, they're definitely a major part in my career in my, in my career right now. Where were you, where are you gonna spend time between now and Stockholm, and, and, you know, and when does, when will you get, get, catch up with the Olympic coaches, and how much involvement will, will Terry have with you? Some of those things, just the, the little minutia stuff. What's, how is that gonna work? Well, Coach, I'll start with Coach Long. Coach Long is going to be my coach through the Olympics. Um, that's surely noted. Um, I leave for Stockholm on the 21st, so I think I'll, I will be here training until the 21st. Then on August, I come back on the 23rd. 
Um, and on August 2nd, I leave to go to San Jose. From San Jose, we go to Beijing on August 4th. And from August 4th, I think to August 23rd or 20 something, I'm in Beijing. And I, then I come back here and get ready, for, and get ready to start applying. <coughs> Yeah, you have a very, very busy schedule, as you mentioned. Does it become overwhelming? Does it become too much? How do you remain grounded and kind of just unwind and keep a clear head about everything? Yeah, th that's, that's the thing where I just realized, well, that's all I have to do. You know, as soon as I get through this month in August, I basically get to go back and relax. You know, so this is the work period, the fun period, and. I have to sometimes relax and sit back and realize to enjoy the moment. A lot of people don't get to go to the Olympics and I have to realize what I'm getting to do. The, the ability to go to the Olympics is something very special. We talked about the negotiations, the business stuff. Are you just trusting people you have or, are you, or do you get involved? In I get involved. Um, anytime you're dealing with your own money, you want to get involved. <laughs> so I definitely get involved. Um, I let my agent handle a lot of it, but nothing's, nothing's going past my ears. <laughs>